Hi everyone, welcome to the instructional video for Crochet 101 Amigurumi Turkeys. We'll be following the Valley Yarns pattern sent out with the Zoom invitation. It was designed by Sarah Delaney. This video is going to assume that you know some basic crochet stitches like single crochet, single crochet two together, and crochet through the back loop. If you need a refresher on those, check out the resource list that was sent out with this video. It also includes a material list as well in case you couldn't get a kit from the library or if you want to make some more of these turkeys. So looking at the pattern, we're going to start with the body. It says for stuffing with brown yarn, loosely wind a ball of yarn about 8 inches around and cut it. Uh, we're actually going to be using some polyfill to stuff our turkeys, but if that is something that you would rather do to stuff with um, some spare yarn, you can absolutely go ahead and do that. There isn't enough yarn included in the kit for you to do that, but you're welcome to uh, supply your own yarn or just use the polyfill that was included with the kit. So it says, with the brown, chain two, place a marker in the first stitch of every round. So what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and make our slip knot. Uh, the way I'm going to do it, just to show you, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. You can do um, whatever you prefer. I'm going to take the tail end of my yarn and just sort of place it over my other end and make a bit of a loop like this. Then I'm going to reach through that loop, making sure I go under this part of the yarn, and I'm going to grab that tail end again. And then I'll grab this tail and the other end, the working yarn, and I'll pull through like that. And that'll give us a slip knot. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take my crochet hook, and I will put my slip knot onto my crochet hook, and tighten it up. You don't want this to be too, too tight. You want to uh, just make sure that you um, have it fairly close, but you want it to be able to move easily up and down on the straight part of the crochet hook. And you want your tail to sort of be towards the back of the crochet hook, pointing towards the handle, and your working yarn sort of towards the front of the crochet hook. And what we'll do, we'll go ahead and chain two. We'll chain one, chain two. You want these chains to be fairly loose because we're going to be actually working into this first chain and we're going to start with round one uh, six single chain in the second chain from the hook so if we look we have the uh, stitch that is on our hook which doesn't count as a stitch we have this first chain and then we have the second chain so we'll point our crochet hook into that first chain and pull up a loop and then we'll yarn over and do a single crochet and we're going to do that five more times into this uh, second chain from the hook so it might look a little tight that's why you should probably um, make sure your chains are fairly loose but they will all fit in there so that's two and it actually also told us to um, place this marker in the first stitch of every round so before um, so I've already done two I'm actually going to go ahead and place that stitch marker before I continue. One moment while I grab my marker. And this marker that we're using, um, so if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go ahead and twist it like this, you can see it opens. Um, there are a bunch of different designs of stitch markers, so if you have one you prefer, you are welcome to use that, but this is what is included in the kit. And so you'll see I have that first stitch right there. And I'll go ahead and just put a marker on that. And when you put on your marker, you can put it through both legs of the stitch or just one leg of the stitch, whatever works for you. You're, we're just marking so that we know that this was our first stitch. Um, we're working sort of in a spiral and it can get confusing um, to see which stitch is which as we go. So we've done two. We'll go for three. We'll do four. And you'll notice that this tail sort of um, hangs kind of in the way as you go. So you have a couple of options. You can either include that tail um, and sort of stitch over it as you like, or you can just kind of keep it out of the way um, and weave it in later. So we've done one, two, three, four. This is five. And here we have six. There we go. So you can kind of see how it wraps around and creates a little circle like that. 
Um, so then moving on to round two, two single chain in each uh, single crochet around. Or single, two single crochet in each single crochet around. Um, so we have six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, and six. The uh, stitch that is on our crochet hook again does not count. Um, so we'll go ahead and this time we're going to fit two single crochets into each one of these stitches. So I'll start with one on my first, and two on my loop and pull through. And then before I continue, I'm actually going to go ahead and put my stitch marker in so I can remember that that was my first stitch. Just Once I'm on camera, I'm such a klutz with these. Okay, there we go. So now I've marked that that's my first stitch, so I'll know where to stop when I finish. And then I'll do another uh, single crochet into that stitch that I was just in. And there we go. So then there's two into that stitch. And we'll keep going. Two more into the next stitch. Two more into the next one. And so on. And then I can see that this is the last stitch that I'm going to be working on because my stitch marker is right here. So then that's two more. And in parentheses in the instructions, you'll see it says 12. So that means that we should have 12 single crochet um, stitches. So if we want to make sure we're doing the right number, we can actually go ahead and count. So the one that our stitch marker is on is one. That's two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and again, the stitch on your crochet hook doesn't count, so we've got 12. All right, so moving on to round three, the instructions state one uh, single crochet in next single crochet, two single crochets in the next stitch, and then repeat from the asterisk five more times. So this is where we're going to start sort of creating a cup shape. If we continue putting multiple um, stitches into each stitch, then we'd uh, create more of a doily. Um, we're trying to create a ball, so we're gonna, um, uh, every other um, stitch or every third uh, stitch, we're going to um, uh, be adding more stitches, so that'll sort of create our ball shape rather than a flat round shape. So I'll take out my stitch marker, and I'll go ahead and in my next stitch right there. I will uh, do a single crochet and then remembering that I am going to put my stitch marker back onto my work on that first stitch that I just made. So again that's the stitch that's after the um, hook. It's never the stitch that's on the hook. Um, so round three, one SC, and next SC, and then two S single crochet in the next stitch. So I've done one single crochet into this stitch, and so now in the next stitch I will do two. That's one and two into the same. And then I'll continue that five more times. So that's one into the next stitch, and then two into the next one. And this is a place where it can be really good to um, practice kind of reading your crochet and figuring out um, what you've just done. So if I look at my crochet, it's a bit hard to tell, but I can see that there's sort of four sets of legs coming out of this stitch here, this hole. And then in the next hole, there's just sort of two sets of legs coming out. So I can um, tell where I've done a one single crochet or two single crochets, that can be really useful if I um, have to put my work down and have to pick it back up. So I've done two there. I'll do one in the next. 
two in the next, one in this next one, two here, and then one here, and two here. one here and two here and you can see that um, the instructions end with a two single crochet so that lines up and then it tells us again at the very end that we should have 18 stitches so we can go ahead and count I won't count on every row um, but uh, in the beginning it can be good to count before you get your counts completely off. So let's see. So one is the one that the stitch marker is on. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and then the one on the uh, hook does not count. So I mentioned this um, during the program, but when I'm talking about stitches, I'm counting, I'm talking about uh, these V's that I'm making. And sometimes they're sort of over to the side, but especially when we start making the cup shape, they can kind of roll up and face us. Um, so look around and try to find those V's wherever they are. And moving on to round four. This is very similar to round three, um, except that we are going to, um, instead of every other stitch, uh, we're going to be doing every third stitch for our, uh, one, for our two single crochets. So what it says, one single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and then two single crochets in the next uh, stitch. So I will go ahead and make a single crochet, and then I'm going to interrupt myself to put in that stitch marker. There we go. Mark the beginning of my round. And then, so the next two stitches are going to have one single crochet in them, and the third is going to have two. And again, that's going to help us create our ball shape rather than a flat circle. So I've done one, one, and two into one. So I have a total of one, two, three, four stitches. And I'm just going to repeat that around. So I'm going to go one, and one. and then two into my next. Then I'll go one and one. And two into my next. And then one and one and two into my next. Continuing on, one and one, and then two into my next. Then we'll go one, and one, We'll finish off on this last stitch with two. So you can see our circle is getting wider, but it's also starting to kind of curl up on the side here. That's because of our um, the uneven number of um, stitches we're putting in. So if we were putting in two just into every stitch around, we'd get a flat circle. So let's move on to five, and that's very similar to four, except that we are um, doing three, uh, one single crochets, and then doing two single crochet into the fourth. So I'll go ahead and start with one single crochet, and then replace my stitch marker. Again, doing it on the stitch I've just made and not trying to put it onto the, the crochet hook or anything. 
spawn it right there. And again, it doesn't matter if you put it onto one leg or through both legs, it's just marking where that stitch is. So that's one. Um, we are doing a uh, single crochet into the next two to make a total of three. So there I've got three stitches. And then I'll do two into this next one, this fourth. So I'll end up with a total of five stitches. So a repeating count of five. So that's one, two, three, four, and five right there. So that's one, two, three, and then two into this one here. Then one, two, three, and two. And one, two, and three, and then two. Continuing on, one, two, three, and then one and two. And I think this is our last repeat. One, two, three. We have one last stitch where our two single crochets are going to go. There we go. So that is round uh, five. Round five. So round six through 14 make up the bulk of our turkey shape. Um, so they are the um, rounds that kind of make up this space here. And so there are um, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, nine rounds of just doing single crochet all the way around. So it's fairly simple. I'm not going to do every single round on video because it's really just doing single crochet into each of these stitches. Um, but you still want to make sure that you're using your stitch marker so that you're, you know which round you're on. You also probably would want a scrap of paper. Um, doesn't really matter what you use. I will use a Just a scrap that I have in my scrap pile. Um, you could also use a, they make um, counting stitch markers um, that could be really useful. You can also get apps for your phone that will count your stitches. Um, I'll just use a simple tally system so I know that I am on number six and I'll remind myself that I need nine uh, rows of this. I think this is probably backwards in the video but don't worry about it. Um, I'm just going to use tallies too count. Um, but for larger projects, you may want to invest in a uh, counting stitch marker or an app or something like that. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and make my first single crochet. And then this is my first stitch of the round. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my stitch marker. Right there. And then I'm just going to single crochet all in every stitch all the way around. So that's going to help us keep that um, that ball shape and it's going to kind of look like a cup and then the decreases that we do after we do um, this part are going to sort of create the top of our ball. But this is useful to know how to do um, in case you want to make covers for a plant pot or for um, for a cup or something like that. This is a really useful crochet shape to know how to do. And as you expand your uh, crochet understanding, you can 
use some different stitches, double crochet, treble crochet, um, and some other uh, techniques to sort of make some different decorative things. But for right now, we're just going to do our single crochet all the way around. And at any point during this, feel free um, to use those resources that I sent out in the email or that I think I will include in the description of this video if you need to uh, remind yourself how to do a crochet stitch or how to um, begin your crochet or any of that. Um, it's really just sort of muscle memory and getting used to the concepts, so feel free to, you know, refer back. I know I'm doing this pretty quickly. Um, so it's not a great stitch tutorial, but it is a good tutorial for this particular pattern. So I've come to the end and I've removed my stitch marker. And now I'm going to um, go ahead and make my first stitch of my second round of these nine rounds of single crochet. And I'll pop that in there. And then just to remind myself, I'll take my little tally mark and I'll put in number two. And I'm gonna, get, gonna continue my single crochets all the way around and I will be back when I am done with my ninth round of single crochet, which will be uh, in total round number 14 of the whole project. So just one moment. All right, so we finished round six through 14, and you can see that we've got the bulk of our uh, round shape all set here. From here on out, we're going to be decreasing and sort of forming the top of this ball, and eventually we'll stuff it with our polyfill, and we'll have a nice turkey shape like this. So to get started on round 15, let me remove my stitch marker. and put my crochet hook back. And so round 15 says single crochet two together, one single crochet in the next of, uh, in each of the next three stitches. So uh, like we did in the program, a uh, single crochet two together takes two stitches and kind of forms them into one to sort of uh, create the decrease that's going to create the top of our ball shape. Um, kind of like the opposite of what we did down here when we increased our rows, the number of stitches in our row. We will do something similar to decrease. So single crochet two together. What I'll do, I'll go into my first stitch just like I was um, doing a single crochet, just like that set up. And then instead of yarning over and pulling through these two, I'm going to go into my next stitch and pull up another loop of yarn. So I have three loops on my crochet hook and then I'm going to go ahead, yarn over and pull through all three of those at once. And so you'll see I've made one single stitch. I have a stitch on my crochet hook and I will take my stitch marker and go ahead and mark my first stitch of this round. like that. And then 15 says one single crochet in each of the next stitches. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll just work on the uh, next stitch that's in line and ju then just continue on through around here. So three single crochets. One, two, three. And then I'll repeat that single crochet two together. So I'll pull up like I was doing a single crochet, but instead of uh, pulling through, I'll go ahead and pull up another loop. So I have three lo loops on my crochet hook and go ahead and pull a loop through. And then as we continue on through this, we're gonna have um, 
fewer and fewer stitches to do, so that'll be nice. So that's one, two, and three. And then we will single crochet two together. And then go one, two, and three. And we'll just continue that pattern all the way to the end. All right, so I'm at the end of round 15, so I'll just go ahead and move into round 16. Very similar to round 15, except instead of doing uh, three stitches for our one single crochet, we'll be doing two stitches. So we'll be doing um, a single crochet two together, and then two stitches, we'll have one single crochet, and then another uh, single crochet two together will be our pattern. So let's go ahead and do that. So single crochet two together, I'll go in as if to make a single crochet, then I'll go into the next stitch and make um, pull up another loop. I'll pull that right through. And then that's our first stitch of the round, so I'll go ahead and put on my stitch marker. It can feel like a pain to use these stitch markers every once in a while, but um, it is really important to remember where you started because it's very difficult to figure that out um, sort of as you go. There is a little, you can kind of see there's a little um, movement upwards where uh, your new round starts, but that can be very tricky to rely on for determining where the next part of your pattern starts. So that was one single crochet, here's my second single crochet, and then we'll single crochet two together. And then continue the pattern, one single crochet, two single crochets, and we'll do two together. One single crochet, two single crochets, and two together. One single crochet, two single crochets, and two together. One, two, and two together. And you might notice that this was a lot faster than doing some of the other rounds. Um, we are decreasing fairly dramatically, so you can see that we're getting this sort of top lip to our um, to our ball here, and I think right here is a good time to stop and sort of start stuffing um, the ball for the turkey. So in the kit we included some polyfill, it's just this white stuffing. You've probably seen something similar if you've ever made um, toys or dolls or opened a pillow or something like that. Um, you can also stuff with um, uh, scrap yarn if you um, have any on hand. That's sort of a more eco-friendly way to do it, but I have a lot of polyfill in my maker space, so I will go ahead and use it up in this project. So you want to stuff it fairly full, but you don't want to sort of go too much because this, uh, this is a fairly tight fabric, but things will start sort of poking out of it like that if you overstuff and you can see the white polyfill and you might not want that for your turkey. So I think we can go right about there. And then also the safety eyes. So in your kit, they were included. Let me see if I can find mine. There we go. They were included two safety eyes. These are a really good um, sort of decorative option. You can also um, embroider some eyes if you happen to have some black yarn or some uh, thick black thread. You can use that as well, um, but right now is a good sort of time to figure out where your safety eyes are going to be. 
And they're made up of this sort of black screw looking thing with the eye on one end. And then it has a counterpiece, this little bit that sticks on like so. And then when you press this into the screw, it will um, stick and I haven't been able to separate them. So don't do that until you are ready. Um, and they're called safety eyes, but if you're giving this as a toy to a child who might put things in their mouths, you'll want to uh, choose another option like the, um, the uh, embroidery option because these can come out and uh, kids will choke on them. So keep that in mind if this is going to be a gift for a small child. So let's see. So I like that placement right there, and it's really up to you whether you want to place, um, place them closer together or further apart. I sort of like going further apart. Then I'll have my beak and my waddle right here. I like that. So once you've placed your eyes where you want them, you can go ahead and take the back. Find the back of the screw and go ahead and just pop that on there. You don't want to push it all the way to the top of the eye because that will um, cause a lot of pressure and the eye will sort of pop out and it won't stick well in your, um, in your fabric. So just going one or two rungs in will be just fine. Just like that. And I'll just do the same for my other eye. And it's a good idea to wait till you're at this point before you start attaching your um, stuffing and doing your safety eyes because that way you can sort of figure out what your um, turkey is going to look like. I'll point out I did embroider the eyes on this one because my safety eyes hadn't come in when I was doing the example so you can kind of see the difference um, between your, your two options there. All right, so my safety eyes are in, I am stuffed, and then we will just continue closing this up in round 17 and 18. All right, for round 17, we'll be uh, single crocheting two together in the first stitch and then doing one single crochet in the next and we'll repeat those two stitches over and over. So we'll do our single crochet two together just like that, just like before. Get the three loops on there and pull through. I will take my stitch marker and go ahead and put it on my first stitch there. And then this can get a little fiddly because of the stuffing. Um, so don't worry if your stitches end up a little longer than they have previously. So single crochet, and then we'll single crochet two together. Single crochet, single crochet two together. Single crochet, two together. One find my center of my camera here, and then two together, and we'll do one, and two together, and that will bring us to our stitch marker. Then for round 18, we will single crochet two together around the whole round just to bring everything together. So here's single crochet two together and one single crochet. Oops, nope, sorry. So single crochet two together and then another single crochet two together. So we're not doing any single crochets by themselves. They're all single crochet two together. I forgot to mark the beginning of my round, but I can uh, figure out where that is. It's 
back over here. So don't be like me. Don't forget to put your stitch marker in the first stitch of the round. I think that's my fourth. One, two, three, and four. So I could put it in now. It's a terrible mistake to make. <laughs> There we go. Okay. That might not be 100% accurate, but we're at the very end, so it doesn't really matter. Two together and pull it through. There we go. So now we can see we're at the top. We only have this very tiny hole at the top here. right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this and the way I'll do that I'll pull this long so I can put my crochet hook down. And I'll grab a pair of scissors and then I want to leave about a good amount of uh, length probably six inches to a foot depending on your preferences. So I'll just cut that off of my ball of yarn here so you can see I have approximately this much. And I will take this end of this yarn and just put it right through, going left to right through my last stitch. And when I pull that tight, it will close off. And you'll see I have this little hole open right here. Um, I can weave this in now or I can do it later, but let's do it now while I have my things in front of me. So for this part, you'll wanna take your yarn needle. Go ahead and put that on the end of your yarn there. And then just kind of look and see where you would like to sort of close it off. So I ended up over here. So I'll just go ahead and go um, over just sort of going opposite that big hole there just to pull this all together. And you'll see when I Pull that tight, sort of cinches up that hole. Now I can go ahead and just tie a knot and I'll just, you know, stick it in using, using any nearby um, spaces that I have. And I'll just kind of do a little knot just to secure everything down. I'll stick this in. Um, just sort of directly into the top and through somewhere in the bottom. Pull that through and then, so this is the uh, yarn that I started with my original tail and then this is my the yarn that I'm just pulled through. So I'll just pull that a little bit, cut it, and you'll see it sort of recedes into the stuffing body. And I can tug this a little bit if I need to and I can squish it around to get it into the shape that I want. And there is my turkey body. So now we will uh, move on to the tail feathers. Okay, so now we can move on to the tail feather part of our turkey. You can see it on the back here. Um, we have this red and yellow yarn, and there are some ridges that are formed um, using our uh, single crochet through the back loop technique. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So if we look at the pattern, it says with red, chain 13, work first stitches in second chain from the hook. So let me just get a length of red here. And just like my other project, I'll start with a um, slip knot. So I'll go ahead and place the tail over there like so. I will pull through that loop and go ahead and pull both ends and get a little slip knot going. Grab my crochet hook, place it so that my tail, um, tail yarn is towards the handle and my working yarn is towards the hook. And I'm going to chain 13. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
and 13. So we have 13 stitches. Again, the stitch on the hook doesn't count as a stitch. And then we'll work our first stitches in the second chain from the hook. So we'll skip this first V that's right next to our hook and work into the second V there. Uh, so let's see. Row one, one single chain in the second chain from the hook, one single crochet in each chain across, turn. Alrighty, so let's put our single crochet in here. And then we will single crochet into each chain down the line. And we're going to end up with 12 single crochet stitches because we skipped that first chain. So we, we chained 13 and now we're just working into 12. Alright, so if we look at this, we have starting from the hook 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, stitches here. So now let's look at row 2, chain 1, one single crochet through the back loop in each of the next 10 uh, single crochets and turn. So at the end of row 1, we'll go ahead and turn, and then we'll look at row 2. Where it says to chain one, so we'll chain just like we um, did our 13 at the bottom, we'll just make an extra chain there, and then one single crochet through the back loop in each of the next 10 single crochets and turn. So we're going to start with this uh, crochet right there, and through the back loop uh, means the loop that is furthest away from you. So if you look at these stitches, they're sort of like a V. Let me try to get that in the camera better. So these stitches kind of form a V. We're going to work in the V that is furthest away from us. So we'll go through here. So instead of going under both legs of the stitch, we're just going into one, and that's the back loop. So that's one two, three, four, five, six, oops, got myself tangled, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. All right, so that is our ten stitches there, and you can see that we have two stitches left down here. We're going to come back to those later. Uh, so what we will do, so at the end of row two, we go ahead and turn. And then row three is the same as row two, so we're going to chain one again, and we're going to single crochet through the back loop of each of the next ten single crochets. So we'll go ahead and go into, uh, we'll skip this first one that we chained, and then we'll go into the second from the, um, from the hook, and again working into that back loop, so that's the loop that's furthest away from us. If you don't see your back loop right away, sometimes things can sort of turn and get a little confusing. Just turn your work until you see those V's again and that should clear it up for you. So you can see if I'm looking directly at my work here, I don't really see any V's. But if I turn it this way, I can see what I'm doing.
and I'll work right down this line. Free little yarn out of my ball there. And get into this last one. And I think that's my 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There. Uh, alrighty, so that is the end of row three, which is the same as row two, so the end of row two tells us to turn. Now we'll start on row four, where we will chain one and single crochet through the back loop in each of the next 10 single crochets and the remaining two unworked single crochets from row two. So we're gonna work all the way back up here and then we're gonna come down here and grab these two. So I'll show you how that'll work. Uh, so we're still working um, into the back loop. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to work these two. So we're going to ignore everything that's happening here and we're just going to work on this little flap here. So we'll come down here and we'll grab one. And that's just a single crochet again through the back loop. One and two. You can see it sort of makes a feather kind of shape once we're done with it. There. So the end of row four tells us to turn. And we'll start with row five. So the start of row five tells us to join yellow. The way we're gonna do that um, it's up to you whether you want to cut the red yarn or not. Um, I prefer to cut it just to sort of make things easier on myself. Um, but if you don't want to, you can um, just leave it on and pick it back up later on. Um, so I'll have this little tail and then I'm going to take my yellow yarn and I'm going to treat it just like it was the red. So I'm going to have the tail dangling towards the handle of the hook and I'm going to have the working yarn in my hand and I'm going to kind of, because it's not attached to anything yet, I'm going to kind of hold it along with my hook just to make things easier for myself. And then, so we'll chain one, but we're going to do it with the yellow instead of with the red. And you'll see how that sort of sits there and then we will do one single crochet in each uh, stitch across and then turn so we're gonna crochet again instead of through the back loop through both loops all the way down this way so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going into both legs for this and once I've made a couple of stitches, I can go ahead and let go of that yellow yarn. And it'll hold itself there. And we're going to crochet all the way across. And one more in there. Sometimes this last stitch can be kind of hard to see. Um, so just be patient with it. Make sure you get that last stitch in there so it looks nice and even. There we go. All right, so there are our single crochets. So that is row five. We'll go ahead and turn and start with row six where we'll chain one. 
and do uh, one single crochet through the back loop in each of the next eight uh, single crochets stitches and then we'll turn. So this is fewer than we did for the red. Um, so this is going to give it sort of a, if you look at this finished one, it's going to give it a bit of a shorter look um, just for a little bit of variation. So you can see kind of um, this ridge is a little bit shorter. So let's go ahead and do that. And how many was it? It was eight. So we've chained one and we'll start through the back loop there. So that's one, two, and again, this time we're working through the back loop. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then after row six, it wants us to turn. And then row seven will be the same as row six. So we'll chain one and then go through the back loop of those eight. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and again, this last stitch is so hard to see, but there's my V right there. It's right there and right there. And eight. All right. And then we'll go ahead and turn then row eight will chain one, uh, go through the back loop of the next eight stitches, and then the remaining four unworked stitches from before. So kind of like the red, we'll go ahead and go through one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and then we'll find that eight there. And then we're going to skip all of this sort of straight line here. And we're going to go into these stitches that are down here. So there's one, two, three, and four that we'll work into into the back loop. We'll do one, two, three, and four. This part can be a little bit tricky, so make sure you take your time and just sort of analyze where your, your stitches are supposed to go. And if it's not perfect, that is completely okay. Let's see. All right, so the end of row eight will turn. And then we will repeat rows one through eight and then work rows one through four once more. So with the red, I'm going to go back and show you one more time. So I can go ahead, again, you can trim this if you want or you can just carry it over. I'm going to go ahead and trim it just to make my life easier. I'll pick my red back up. The repeat of um, the end of row eight doesn't tell you to do this, but I think it's a good idea to make sure that you get the appropriate number of stitches when we repeat this section and go back to one. Um, what you want to do is just go ahead and chain one, just so you have a chain there. That way we have 12 stitches that are running um, up this way. If you don't, at least in my experience, you'll come up one short which is frustrating. Not the end of the world, but frustrating. So let's go ahead and chain one. Then we'll take our red yarn and we'll start working in the second chain from the hook. So that's here, that's our first chain. And then we'll work in this second set of Vs. And we're doing single crochet. 
so we do not need to uh, work through the back loop. We can just do a single crochet through both loops. So we're going to skip that one and go right into that one. And at first this is going to be a little tough to fuss with um, just because everything is going to kind of loosen up. But as you go, you can kind of tighten those ends to make sure everything stays nice and taut. And then after a couple of stitches, it won't matter. So let's go up. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then twelve is this stitch that's kind of hiding up here. You can kind of see that it's just really at the top right there. So we'll grab that. And that is our 12 stitches. And then we will go ahead and turn and we'll chain one. And again, just like we did in this first red section, we will um, go ahead and uh, single crochet through the back loop of the next 10 stitches. So we'll start here. We have this first chain um, that we've just made, and so this is our actual stitch. This is just a chain that we made. And we'll go through the back loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, oh. keep slipping off. Seven, eight. And as you go through the, your yarn, you might find something like this. This is just a, a point in the manufacturer process where um, one reel of yarn ended and another began. You can just, um, you know, snip these short or you can cut the ends and there are a lot of different splicing techniques that you you can use. I'm just going to um, cut that short to work with it. This isn't going to experience a lot of, you know, tension, the tail feather part, so I'm not worried about it sort of unraveling. But I have forgotten how many stitches I did, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There we go. And that leaves us with our two stitches down here. So that is 10. And then we will go ahead and turn and then repeat row two. So we'll chain one and uh, go ahead and do another stitch through the back loop, single crochet through the back loop for every stitch coming up. That's two, three, and this part we are working through the back loop. So four, five, it can be a little tricky to remember where you are single crocheting and where you are single crocheting through the back loop. Um, so just pay attention to the pattern and you'll be, you'll be all right. One, was that it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That was it. All right, so that was uh, row three. Now row four, we will turn and chain one, and then we will go back down our ten, and then pick up these two at the bottom. And again, this is working through the back loop. And 
them, we're working on these two down here. So we're skipping this vertical line there. So go to the back loop of that first one into the back loop of this second one. And there we go. So that is uh, round four. We'll go ahead and turn and we're going to join our yellow yarn again. So I'll go ahead and snip this. And if you are going to cut it, you want to leave enough length that um, you can weave it in after when you're done. So back to our yellow. So with the yellow, we'll go ahead and chain one. And again, when we're attaching the yellow, we're just treating it as if it were where our red yarn, um, you want to put a little tension on the tail there just to make it easy enough to work with. And then just kind of pretend it's the yarn you were working with before. Like so. Uh, let's see, join yellow, chain one, one single crochet, and each single crochet across. So we're going to single crochet all the way to the top, ignoring this chain that we just made. So right under there. And again, this is kind of loose down here, but you can tighten it up by hand by tugging on your ends there. And then after a few stitches, you won't notice it anymore. You want to make sure when you're working up this way, it's a single crochet. So we'll continue all the way up the top with our single crochet. Just a few more stitches here. Apologies if I keep disappearing off the camera. There we go. Okay, so now we're at the top. Um, so that was the end of row five. We'll go ahead and turn, we'll chain one to row six and one single crochet through the back loop in each of the next eight stitches and turn. So this chain um, doesn't count as a stitch. It's just what we, we made as a chain. Our first stitch is this one right down here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. So we have eight, so we have one, two, three, four stitches left at the bottom. And we will go ahead and turn. Row seven is going to be as row six, so we'll chain one as in row six, and then we will go through the back loop up these eight stitches. One, two, three, and so on, till we get to eight, that's five, six, seven, and eight. So when you get to this one, I've said this before, but it can be a little hard to find that stitch. So you kind of look at it and it looks like this. You can see the V when you finally kind of manipulate it and bring it over here. You can see that V finally, just to help you get your bearings. All right, and that is eight. And then we'll go ahead and turn for row six. And then for row eight, we will chain one,
go through the back loop of the next eight stitches and then the four unworked stitches down here. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we'll skip this long bit down here and start with our four stitches down there. You want to make sure you don't start with this uh, wide open stitch that uh, starts our our feather there. We want to go to the first nice solid V. So let us uh, go through the back loop of that first V and the next three after it. Two, three, and four. All right, that is uh, the end of rows one through eight, our second repeat. Now we'll ro uh, work rows one through four. So we'll go ahead and cut our yellow and grab our red one more time. And then again, for this part, it doesn't tell you to chain one, but I think it's a good idea so you get the right number of um, stitches. You can do that before or after you turn the work. Won't really affect it either way. So I've chained one. And now we'll find the end of my red. Grab this and then we will do our single crochet into the second stitch. So that is one, and then these are very loose because they have nothing to hold on to, so I'll tug those up like that. And then we will crochet. This is a little, little shorter than I'd like, but it'll do, I think, for now. And again, we're doing single crochet after we've joined, so we're not going through the back loop. We're connecting our two colors of yarn together. So we're going through both legs rather than just the back leg or loop. And all the way up, so find that, <coughs> excuse me, find that fiddly stitch at the very top. There we go. So that is the end of row one. We've got 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Our 12 is a yellow stitch, but that's okay. Um, so go ahead and turn. And then for row two, we'll chain one and then um, for this one, we'll again be working into the back loop to give us these ridges that make up our tail feather. So again, crocheting just into the back loop, not going over or under both legs. And we're doing that for 10 stitches. And I think that was 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And one more. And there's 10. So we'll go ahead and turn. Row 3 is as row 2, so we'll chain 1 and go through the back loop, single crochet through the back loop for 10 stitches heading up. Six, 
seven, eight, nine, and 10. Great. So row two. All right, so at the end of row two, we turn, and then we are uh, on row four. So we'll chain one. We're almost done. So we're going to go in through the back of these 10 and then pick up our two down here. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're going to skip this sort of long area here and we're going to work into these two stitches here. So let me grab into the back loop this first stitch, and then this second stitch. All right. And so that brings us to the end of our tail feathers. So we can go ahead and finish this off by cutting after six or so inches. And we'll just make one more pull through Now I'll secure that, and now we have all of these pieces that we can um, either sew into the body or we can sew it back up into the um, tail feather itself. You just want to make sure that you're leaving at least these two end bits, um, these red bits at the end, so that's where it'll actually attach to the turkey. So we have our two main parts of the turkey. Um, we just have two more very small parts that we're going to make. We're going to make the beak and we're going to make this little snood. And these are going to be fairly simple to make. So for the beak, you'll want to take your yellow yarn and go ahead and make a slip knot however you prefer. For the camera, I'll do it this way. That's not it. There we go. So I'll go ahead and make my slip knot. And you want to leave a bit of a long tail for this. This is a lot longer than I need, but that is okay. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a little triangle. The way I'm going to do that, I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and use these two um, stitches here. And I'm going to um, single crochet two together. And that's going to give me a tiny little triangle shape. So if I do that, pull one up there pull one up there and pull it through and you can see I've got this little triangle to work with. If you wanted a bigger beak you um, can do that. What you would do I would probably go ahead so this is my chain three I could chain four and then I could go ahead and um, Uh, single crochet into the three stitches down here. This one is kind of tight, but that's all right. Let me redo this so it's not quite as tight. So making a longer beak. So let's go 
one, two, three, and four. And then I will single crochet into these three. two, and three. And then I'll go ahead and turn my work. And then I'm just going to uh, single crochet two together, these two. So um, I'm not gonna bother to chain one or anything like that. I'll just go into that first stitch and pull up a loop go into the second stitch and pull up a loop and then bring these two together and you can see we've made a, a little triangle shape. So there's these and then it come, kind of comes to a point. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and cut the yarn. Again, you don't need a super long tail for this, just long enough that you can grab it and pull it through like this. And so now we have our beak. And then for the snood is even easier. So we'll take our red yarn and we'll go ahead and make our slip knot. And we are going to chain about nine, I think. So depending on how long you want your snood to be. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, I think I can, can get away with seven. So I'll go ahead and um, uh, chain seven. And then what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and uh, do a slip stitch. I forget if we did a slip stitch for any other part of this, but it's super easy. All you have to do is go in as if you were doing a single crochet and you're gonna go in that first um, stitch from the slip knot that you can see. And pull one up like we were doing a single crochet, but then instead of reaching around and grabbing and doing a single crochet, we're just gonna keep pulling all the way through. Oops. And that will make us our snood. And then we'll go ahead and cut this. and pull through Oop. give that a little tug and then this will make up our little snood okay so now we have all of our pieces so let's finish this up by putting everything together what i'm going to do i'm just going to go ahead and um take all these yarn ends that I have and I'm going to thread them up and weave them into the rest of the tail. So I'm going to start with my first yellow thread here. And what I'll do is I will take it on my yarn needle and I'll just sort of poke it in between wherever seems like a good place going up the yellow part of this feather so you can't really see it. And you can sort of split the stitches as you go between them, or you can go under entire stitches. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you're sort of hiding this end like that. And then once I have it all in there, I can go ahead and snip it. And then you can't see that little end that I've um, made right there. So I'm gonna do that for most of these. I'm going to do it for the next red and yellow. I'm going to leave this red and I'm going to leave the two reds at the end. Um, so I'll be right back when I have finished weaving in all of these. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and I have woven in all of the ends of my tail feathers and it doesn't really matter which um, side you use against the turkey, um, just whichever you feel is better. I sort of like the the look of this side, I think it pops out more, so I'm going to have that lying on the back. Now I will take my turkey ball form and lay it on top. What I'm going to do is 
uh, use these bits of yarn, these three here. I'm going to attach it to the back bottom of the turkey there. So let's roll this over. And before you start, you may want to um, double check and just make sure that this is where you want it positioned. You want it sort of positioned in the middle um, around so it's not sort of off center with where you have your eyes. So that looks pretty good to me, I think. So if I hold it like this, I can go in here and I could go in this very bottom, but I think I'm going to go a little further up just so it's sort of hidden. And you can just sort of go, it doesn't really matter, um, you can kind of treat this like a, like a fabric and just sort of go in wherever your needle will fit and attach it there. And then I will go ahead and come around the back here and just sort of make a knot right there. And that's going to anchor my tail feather in place. And then just for security and kind of stability, I'm going to uh, sort of sew in along this ridge a little further up, and that's going to help my tail feather sort of stay up. So let me go in, and I want to make sure that I'm catching the brown as I go up here. I won't go too, too far. I'll go probably just about here. I want to make sure that I'm catching the brown. You might accidentally pull out a little polyfill as you do this. That is completely okay. You can just stuff it right back in. And this will be my last and I'll go in there. So I'm going to go in. Oh, I'm coming off camera. So I'm going to go in to where the brown is and catch that there. And then in order to hide this back knot, I'm not going to come back up through. I'm just going to sort of go this way and make my knot right there. And then as I tug that tight, it'll secure that right there. So now I've got this tail feather secured to my turkey. And then to hide the rest of this, um, sort of like I hid the top and the bottom, with the stuffing, I'll just poke it through, right through the turkey, and have it come out the front, and then pull that a little, snip it, and it'll recede back into the body of the turkey, like so. And so now I can do that Oops, with this side as well. So I'll go ahead and just make sure I have everything where I want it. I'll take this end and put it on my yarn needle like that. Then go into here to make this first knot that will anchor my tail feather to my body and then I'm going to stitch and I'm going to stitch up sort of this ridge right here where I don't think anything will see so I'm going to make sure I'm going in and catching the brown and then moving up through the red in through the brown and come up through the red Oops. And if, you're, uh, if your yarn comes off your needle, you can just pop it right back on. Then we'll get in one more time. Catch that brown. Pull it through, and instead of coming back up through the tail, through the tail feathers, I'll go ahead and make a knot here. And again, if you don't have that much yarn to use, you don't have to... Uh, go up quite as far as I'm 
going, you can always go back and add a few extra stitches into the back as well for stability's sake. I'll push. Um, so I'm just hiding the end of my yarn in that body. So I'll just push it through there. Tug this a little bit. Cut that off there. And then I have my tail attached to my body. You can see it sort of falls back a little bit here, so I'm going to use this yarn to make that not happen. That's why I think it's a good idea to leave that middle middle bit of yarn. That's this is the just the piece of yarn from the middle red portion. So for this, I'm just using this part for stability, so I'm not going to bother making any knots. I just want to make sure that I'm picking up, getting far in enough that I can scoop that brown yarn up with it. But you won't really be able to see what you're doing unless you open it this way. And I'll bring this up actually a little bit high just so I can keep that stability. And it's going to be up to you how you um, attach these to your turkey. So I'll go ahead and tug that through. And then I'm just making a knot with that last bit. Now I've got my tail feathers adhered, and I will go ahead and poke my yarn needle through my body, have it come out the front here, and cut it short. And there we go. And then uh, I forgot to do this earlier, but I'm just going to um, go ahead and get rid of this top bit as well. This is actually um, where I started my body. It actually turned into the top, which is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and put that on the yarn needle. And I don't need this to sew up anything. This is already pretty, pretty close, so I can just poke it right through and hide it. If I had an opening there, I could use the extra yarn to go ahead and sew that up like I did at the bottom. But I don't need to, so I won't. And there we go. So there is our tail feather attached to our turkey. So we're almost done. The only thing we have left is to attach our beak and then attach our snood right next to the beak. So again, we've got our yarn needle, and I will take one end of my beak triangle and just sort of position that, take a moment to decide where exactly that should be positioned. I sort of like it right between the eyes right there. So you can kind of use the crochet fabric to sort of imagine a row, um, so my eyes are more or less parallel. And then I'll just put the beak just about there. So I'm going to, I've got my yarn on my hook and I'm just going to go ahead and grab just a little bit of brown yarn wherever I want the corner of the beak to go. Then when I come down I'll go through that center and come out this way again and just make a little knot there. That will attach my beak to my turkey face. And then I will poke my yarn needle into the body and bring it up further away in order to hide it. Right there. And I'll repeat that with the other side. So again, I'm just picking up 
wherever I'm imagining that corner is going to be. I'm just picking up some brown yarn right next to it. Pull that through. Go ahead and turn it into a knot to secure it. And then I'll go in into the body and pull away. And if I need to, I can trim a little bit. And then I'll give that a tug. And there is my, my turkey with my beak. Now all we need is the snood. And for the snood, it's only going to hang from one point. I have two pieces of yarn here. So I'm actually just going to trim these two pieces so that they are roughly the same length. This nude part here and I'm actually going to just do these two pieces at the same time and treat them as one piece of yarn. So your yarn needle should be able to fit both lengths in it. Maybe with a little finagling. There we go. All right, so I have both lengths in my yarn needle and then I'm just going to go just to my left of my beak. Pop that in there, grab the snood and pull it through. But I don't want to pull it off the needle just yet because I want to go in here and I can actually just go ahead and make a knot. Oops. Just right there using the, the ends there. And we'll put a knot nice and tight right there. And so now I have the ends coming off here and I will go ahead and hide them just like I did with my body. If I can get them back on the needle. And if you have trouble getting them both on the needle, you can definitely do them separately. It doesn't really matter. I'm just, you know, taking the lazy way out. I'll just pull those right through. Boop. And I'll cut these there. And there we go. Here you have your very own crocheted amigurumi turkey. I hope you had fun making this amigurumi turkey with me. Um, please keep an eye out on our virtual events calendar on our website for more fun programs like this.